Okay, sorry for the delay with this video, but let's get this going. Um, so here's the idea. You can find the area of a trapezoid if you know the height, which is the vertical height, 90 degree angle, like perpendicular to the bases, which are parallel, and it's important to know that. Um, and you know the length of the bases. So it says the height of the trapezoid is the perpendicular distance between the bases, like I said, and the area is one half the product of the height and the sum of the bases. I'm going to break this down for you a little bit to make it a little make a little more sense because it's actually you should be thinking about it like this. The area is equal to the height times base one plus base two oops, divided by two or the average of the bases. Okay, so the idea is what's going on here is like this. I'm going to use some colors here. If you sliced this so the average of the bases is, is like the exact in between where, you know, of the two measurements. Like if you had four and eight, the average of that is six, right? In between four and eight is six. So you could use that as a, as a like the base if you were going to make it like a rectangle because the rectangle here, like this, you have this height right here. And then if you were to take, divide this right down this here and cut off this triangle and fill it in right in here, See if I can make that right. I don't know why it's not on the right. Fill it in right there. Then that becomes basically like, a, you know, the side of a rectangle, 90 degree angles, right? And if you did the same thing on the other side, you took, uh, let me use the green again, I guess. You took this and you sliced that right down there and trimmed this off and filled that triangle in there, assuming that I cut it at the right spot so that it was the same size, right? What you would get is this length here the base length, which is essentially an average of the two bases, base one plus base two divided by two. That length is an average, and then what you've got is just the width times the height, like it's a rectangle. So all of this is really calculating the average width if you were to cut off pieces and turn it into a rectangle. So the height is the height. This is the average of the two bases, which then becomes like what the width would be if you turned it into a rectangle by cutting those pieces off and filling them in there. Does that make, make sense? Okay, so, and the reason that I, so I rewrote it like this because it looks like you're taking half of the height, but that's confusing. What you're really taking is half of the sum of the bases to get an average for this distance here. Okay, let's play this out with some actual problems. Okay, so they've got this image of Nevada. Uh, what's the approximate area of Nevada? Well, you can you can treat it as though it's a trapezoid because it's pretty close to being a trapezoid. Now, what are the bases? Okay, um, which borders of Nevada can you use for the bases? Well, they've got to be parallel. So what you've got to do is you've got to use this right here and this right here as the two bases. So you say, okay, um, we do one half the height, which is 309, remember, the distance between the two bases, times base 1 plus base 2. Remember this, base 1, 205, and this base 2, 511, okay? Divided by 2 become the average of them, and that's like taking this chunk and cutting it off here and filling it in here, okay? So then all you have to do is simply calculate it, and it calculates out to be about 110,600 miles squared. So that's how you do that. That was a quick problem and in just a minute. So here's the uh, got a problem for you. You're going to pause it, you're going to solve it, and then you're going to unpause it and check your answer against mine. Okay, so uh, what's the area of the trapezoid with height of 7 and bases of 12 and 15? So pause the video now, calculate this out, and unpause it to see the answer. Okay, now. Uh, I'm going to do, I can do a screen capture grab here, and I'm going to do that to grab the formula because we can, we want this formula. We could uh, make a sketch of the trapezoid, but you know, we don't really even need to. Um, what I'm just going to do is fill in the numbers that we've got. Okay, we want the area, and the area is going to be equal to one half times the height, which is seven. Uh, times base 1 plus base 2, 12 plus 15, okay? And 
then you get, okay, one half times seven times uh, the sum of 12 and 15, I can write this as 27. So you can say seven times 27 times one half. And I'm just gonna do, uh, I, I have a calculator in the other room, but I'm too lazy to get it. So this is easier for me. 49, carry the four, seven times two is 14, plus four is 18, so 189. So one half of 189. And let's see what we get. Uh, half of 189. I can do this in my head, but I'll do it for you anyway. Two goes into 18. Actually, let me erase that and do a better job. Okay, we've got 189. I'll just do it up here. Not to belabor this, but you should uh, see some division in action once in a while in your life. Why not? Now, you could see that half of, half of 180 is 90, and half of 9 is 4.5, so it would be 94.5. But if you wanted to write it out, you can write it out. Two goes into 9, 4 times, oops, 8. Get one left over, so we're going to annex a 0 by putting the decimal there and bringing a 0 down. And now it's 10, and 2 goes into 10 5 times. Okay. So then what we get as an answer is 94.5. And what are the units? This is a great discussion right now. Well, we're finding area, so we know whatever units is. It's units squared. And we can see right here that we used centimeters, right? So we had centimeters times an average of centimeters there. So it is centimeters squared, so centimeters squared. And that, my friends, is how you do it. All right, this is a cool one because you're not given everything on a platter. You've got to figure some stuff out based on the mathematics that you've learned. So check it out. Um, what's the area of this trapezoid? We need to know this vertical height, okay? And in order to learn what that vertical height is, so I don't know if you can see that, but this right here, in order to figure that out, we, what we really need to do is, is turn this, um, by the way, this 60 degrees should like ding, ding, ding in your head. That's a special triangle, right? Um, so let's treat it as such. Let's see what I can do here about um, creating this, this line right here, okay? So now that we've got this here, we say, oh, we've really now formed a triangle and a, uh, as it turns out, a square, okay? Um, but uh, not a square, but a, a rectangle rather. So uh, what do we got? Well, if this is 7 right here, and going over here is 5, and we drop this as, a, as a, you know, an altitude, so we know that that's 90 degree angles, um, then what we've got here is 5 for this length, and this length here then becomes a 2. Okay, that's 2 meters. And we've got this 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, so if this angle is 60, um, well, let's re just read what they say. Like, I can talk through it, but they, they say it nicely. Um, you can draw an altitude that divides the trapezoid into a rectangle and a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Since the opposite sides of a rectangle are congruent, um, we know that the longer base of the trapezoid is divided into segments of two meters and five meters right here. So that's what they've got here, and that's what they've got here. Now we've got this height, and we, you should know, and I'll just redraw a little uh, 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay, whatever this is as uh, a measurement, this short leg, then this long hypotenuse is twice that amount, and this long leg is that amount times the square root of three. So since we're seeing that that's exactly where it lands, where this is the side adjacent to the 60 degree angle, meaning it's the opposite of the 30, then we know that that's that x side. And then this side is going to be that measure times the square root of 3. Since it's 2, it's going to be 2 square root of 3. 2 square root of 3. That is what the height is. And as you can see here, then, they just take 
They say the longer leg equals the shorter leg times the square root of three in the 30, 60, 90 triangle. And then they just plug the amounts in. Here's the one half, the height is two root three, and the bases are seven still and five. Remember, because even though we dropped that down to turn that into a length of five, we just did that for the purposes of knowing what this was to find the altitude. We still have a base of seven here and a base of five. So you plug them in, okay? And when you multiply that all out, you get 12 root three, which by the way, one half of two root three is just root three. So that's root three times 12, that's 12, 12 root three, okay? And you know that the units were meters and it's an area, so it's squared, so it's meters squared. Got it? Great. Um, then let me get this out of the way and I will give you your got it problem. Um, sometimes it helps to draw a sketch of things, particularly when you're doing these 30, 60, 90s or something like that. Um, but in fact, this is related, but not exactly the same, okay? In problem two, suppose that the height decreases so that uh, the angle changes, MP becomes 45, while the angles R and Q still stay the same, meaning that they're both 90 here still, and so we know that we've got parallel lines. Um, and the bases stay the same. We've got five, we've got seven, and this is a good one to sketch out. What is the area of the trap site? Sketch this out, figure it out, come right back and watch my explanation after you try it. But first, pause the video right now to uh, solve this problem. Just pause it now. Okay, assuming that you paused it and now you're back. Uh, let's sketch this out. We've got a length of five here. We've got a length of seven here. Okay, but they've changed it in such a way now that it turns out that this is a 45 degree angle in here. Okay, 45 degree angle. So what we need to do then is we need to treat it like the like the 45, 45, 90 triangle, and not the 30, 60, 90. So if we know that uh, this is five and this is seven, then we have a base here um, because this continues to be five, right? Just like it is above. And what's left for here? This is two, this is two meters. Well, in a 45, 45, 90, remember it's an isosceles triangle. And if these two angles are the same, then these two legs are the same, means now the height is two. So we've got a height there of two meters and uh, that's perfect. So let's, uh, figure this out then. Okay, we've got the same formula. I'm gonna trim that formula out of here to use it. Uh, I can do better actually, let's do that again. And if we're using this formula and we plug in all the numbers, then we say, okay, then the area is equal to one half. We now figured out the height because it's a 45, 45, 90 that these two Legs are congruent, because they're opposite the 45 degree angles, which are the congruent. So that's a height of two. So we fill in a height of two. And the base one and the base two are five plus seven. Um, notice this one half right here. You can, when you're doing it, if you want to do mental calculations, what you really need to do is you need to take one half of one of these numbers, not both of them. So if you said five times seven is 12, which it is, Okay. And you can see that uh, this 2 times 12 is 24, and taking half of that would be 12, right? So that's the same as combining this together, 1 half of 2 is 1, and then you would have 1 times 12, which would be 12. Regardless of the way that you do that, um, what you've got here is 12. They were meters, and it's area, so we've got meters... I feel like I'm writing, but I don't know why it's not writing. There you go. Um, meters squared, okay? And that's the area of the trapezoid that they were looking for. I hope that made sense and is helpful. Okay, you're gonna like this one. Uh, this is for area of Ramos and Kites, which is the other part of this. Um, We've done trapezoids. So the basic formula says uh, you, if you know the length of the diagonals, meaning going from corner to corner, kind of like the sticks on a kite, right? If you were to hold this kite, if you're building a paper kite and you wanted to put two sticks, 
those lengths right there, the diagonals from each opposite vertex. Okay. Then what you get is this formula right here. You're taking one half of diagonal one times diagonal two. Why does that work? Check it out. Uh, I've I've actually um, took little screenshots of, of these two figures. And what I did as well is I made uh, rectangles that fit them, okay, that border around them. And what you'll notice is that if you took this rectangle, which would have a height of D1 and a width of D2, right, that whole thing, that rectangle would, would be, the area would be this times this. So by doing this times this times one half, what you're getting is half of that amount. And as you can see here, right, for any particular one of these four boxes that you're getting by these diagonals splitting up, the actual figure, this rhombus or this kite, the amount of that is exactly half of the whole thing. It's going diagonal to diagonal in those in that rectangle. Okay, so that's the idea. You say of this whole rectangle, which is formed by this times this, that area, right? You only want half of that amount. Thing. I only want that half of that rectangle, and I only want half of that rectangle. I only want half of that and half of that. So that's where the one half comes in, and the two diagonals are actually like the width and height of a rectangle. Hope that makes sense because we're about to use it. Okay, so here's the problem. They're saying what is the area of kite KLMN, and what have they given you? They've given you the, the uh, the measurements and segments, okay? They've said, this is two, this is three, this is three, this is five. So then, what are the diagonals? Okay, we'll find the length of the two diagonals. Km is just two plus five, or seven meters. And Ln is just three plus three, or six meters. So you just plug that in. One half of seven times six, which is 42, is 21, 21 square meters. So ridiculously easy that uh, it took us that long. Okay, so here's your got a problem. What is the area of a kite with diagonals that are 12 and 9 inches long? Pause the video. This should only take a moment. Um, use the formula that's given. One half diagonal one times diagonal two for the area. Pause it now. Okay, assuming that you did. Uh, here we've got the formula. We'll drag it down here, make it big. Okay. And it's just simply filling in the numbers. It's really just as straightforward as that. The area is equal to one half of diagonal one, 12, and diagonal two, nine. Now, as I said, we can do this multiplication first and say what's one half of 12? It is six. So that's the same as six times 9. And what is 6 times 9? It is 54. So the area is equal to 54. And what were the units? They were inches. And we're talking about area. So we've got 54 inches squared. And that whole problem took us less than two minutes. Amazing. Okay, and we're already here at the end of this lesson. Finding the area of a rhombus. Um, it doesn't always have to be this, this challenging. It depends on what you've got. But in this case, it says carpooling. The high occupancy vehicle, the HOV lane, is marked by a series of diamonds or rhombuses uh, painted on the pavement. There, diamond is not a technical term, although kite is. Diamond is really a rhombus, what we're talking about. Okay. Painted on the pavement. What's the area of the HOV lane diamond shown at the right? Well, what they've given you here is this is 2.5. That's easy to say, well, that whole thing is going to be 5. But they didn't give us this length here, actually. Okay. What they gave us was this of 6.5. Now, let's just uh, read this. Okay. First of all, we how can we find that length of AB here? Okay. And what we know is we know in a right triangle, one of the legs and the hypotenuse. So you can use the Pythagorean theorem. And so what they do, when you see this, I'm just going to show you where they got that for AB. Okay? I'm going to start out by saying, um, let's just say instead of A squared plus B squared equals C squared, I'm going to say AB squared plus 
bc squared, these two legs here and here, okay, equal ac squared. Make sense? Okay. Now remember, we're solving for ab here. That's what we want to know what this is. So how do you do that? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to subtract away b c squared from both. Okay, I'm not sure I'm recording again, but uh, sorry, I didn't mean to write that equal sign. We want to erase that and we want to write uh, minus bc squared. And of course, then what you have as a result is ab squared. And really that actually is, um, it's not like a times b squared, it's just that measurement squared. So I'm going to write it like that. So you can see that that's just a measurement of ab and then you square it and you have the length of ac squared minus the length of bc squared. We just subtracted bc squared from both sides, okay? And you don't really want ab squared. You want to know what ab is. So what you can do is square root both sides. So you say ab is equal to uh, the square root of ac squared minus bc squared. And of course, that's what they have here up top. Um, AB is equal to the measurement of AC, 6.5 squared, minus the measurement of VC, 2.5 squared, and then all square rooted. Okay, I apologize for this segment. It, it's a little, it, it's gone a little glitchy, but uh, so that's the idea there. And, and I just, even though this might feel like it's stopping up a little bit, I really want to show you how um, this is just a Pythagorean triple. You've learned about Pythagorean triples, numbers that uh, work out really nicely, really whole numbers. Um, it's a modification on, on that because what we have as a triangle here is, um, oops, um, it says we've got 6.5 and 2.5. And what we just found out was six. And if we were to scale that up by a factor of two, what you would get would be 2.5 times two is five, six times two is 12, and 6.5 times two is 13. And you get the classic 5, 12, 13 right triangle. So if you knew that, you could look at that and say, oh, that's just two of the three measurements of the 5, 12, 13 right triangle scaled down by a factor of two cut in half, okay? Um, that, for me, that's worth, uh, I feel like it's worth mentioning because uh, you're the, there's going to be kids out there that are going to start to make that connection, and then your life just like frees up incredibly because you can see what's going on with the numbers, okay? Anyway, you plug all those numbers in, and you simplify it out, and you get, oh, by the way, so if this was 6.5, right, then... I'm sorry, if this was 6, then this whole length is 12, and this was 2.5, so that's 5. So then you got 12 times 5 times 1 half, and you get 30 square feet. I'm uh, sorry if that was a little bit less clear than I could have made it, but uh, here is your got it problem. Okay, Rama says sides of 10 centimeters long. If the longer diagonal is 16 centimeters, what's the area of the rhombus? And I'm going to just do you a favor here and sketch this for you. Rhombus has sides, just so you understand what it is that they're telling you. Each side is 10 centimeters long, okay? You've got these two perpendicular diagonals going on like this, so you know you have an, a right triangle going on, and the longer diagonal is 16, okay? Um, what's the area of the rhombus? Figure this out, pause the video, and unpause it when you have your answer. Okay, so if you know that the entire diagonal of the long way is 16, that means you've got a segment of it right here being eight, okay? And so we've got this triangle that looks like this. You've got eight, you've got 10, and for those of you that are keyed into what I just said uh, a little bit ago, um, you will say, does this have any relation to some kind of uh, Pythagorean triple I know? Well, actually, this is just the three, four, five right triangle scaled up by a factor of two, and that means if you do five times two to get your 10, 
four times two to get your eight, you're gonna do three times two and you're gonna get your miss, missing measure here of six. You could have done the Pythagorean theorem uh, to solve it and plug in the right numbers, but again, saves you time when you know the Pythagorean triples and you know how to relate them, okay? So we've got this measure of six, which means the whole diagonal this way is 12. Now that we know that, we can say, okay, we've got our formula, our formula right here, if I trim this out and drag it down, oops, is one half diagonal one times diagonal two. And so let's fill those numbers in. We've got one half of, we figured out one diagonal was, remember, we calculated this to be six. So the whole side is, the whole one is 12 times 12 times, they told us that the longer diagonal is 16, okay? So you can take one half of 12, which is six right here, and six times 16 is 96. I know that. And they were centimeters in its area, so it is now centimeters squared for the area of this figure, okay? And I got a little janky there at the end, but at least the video is done and you can get started on your work. Hope that all made sense to you. Uh, good luck. Email me any questions you have.